common questions that we get asked both in digital media and in the telco industries is how do we ingest uh, large volumes of web log data or ad server log data uh, into Netiza, right? And typically, um, the type of information in this in this uh, web log files is either clickstream information or it could be CDR. It's some sort of uh, event information, but it's stored at a very granular level. Uh, there is a common misconception that data in these type of files is very unstructured. That's not true. Uh, they have a good amount of structure, uh, but they're not necessarily uh, you know, something that can be easily read and parsed, right? Because uh, you may have data of different um, types, you may have data of different lengths, um, you may have nested data structure, so it's complex data types. Um, so there are different ways by which you can uh, load that data into Netiza. Uh, but before that, I want to talk about a couple of uh, considerations that you may want to think about uh, when loading this. Uh, the first and foremost thing is it has to be able to scale very well, right? Uh, when we are talking about uh, web log data or clickstream data, we're talking about billions of events um, in an average size company. So the ability to quickly process that uh, and then do that at scale with increasing data volumes becomes very important. And you also want to be able to do that very fast because loading data from these files into your target system as quickly as possible is very important because that reduces your overall analytic cycle time. You also want to be able to process strings uh, because typically um, the type of data that's in here are uh, you know HTTP um, you know request strings and, and, and or you encoded URL strings uh, which may have key value pairs. So you may want to have some sort of um, regular expression parsing or string parsing capability. Another uh, key capability is the ability to um, iterate or, or go back and forth uh, on this data. One of the things that you want to do with uh, with clickstream data is do correlation of events or do sessionization. So you may want to go back, do a little bit of backtracking on this. So an iterative capability is, 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 is relevant. Um, and um, some of the most commonly used um, techniques for, for loading this data is either you can load them uh, directly into Netiza, or, or you may use uh, an intermediary, and I'll show you both of these techniques. So, and to address scale and, and speed, um, you know, a parallel uh, data warehouse or a parallel infrastructure helps, right? And that's what Netiza brings to the table. And then to do these strings and integration, you need um, a, either a procedural uh, paradigm, something like MapReduce, uh, may be very relevant, right? And, and again, that's something that we support uh, inherently uh, in Netiza. So given these capabilities, uh, the question is, how do you load this um, into a, a target system like Netiza? Now, Netiza provides um, a loader utility, right? And we call that as um, NZ loader. And what you could do is you could um, send this data or send these files uh, to Netiza, create a, uh, a dummy table or a staging table, one column, and load all this data. And then inside of Netiza, um, you could uh, parse this data in a couple of different ways. One is we have a regex or regular expression uh, extension um, that is available, and you can actually embed that as part of SQL and use that for parsing data, extracting um, data out of this flat files, and then pushing it into target uh, marts, for example, right? So these marts could be either uh, views or, or, or they could be uh, data marts of slightly different structure. Or the other uh, way to do that is actually use MapReduce, and we have the ability uh, to write MapReduce code inside of Netiza that runs inside the engine in parallel. Um, so that, and you could procedurally code uh, your session isolation logic or different types of logic in that. And we have some templates and samples that help you do that. So this is option one. Now, if you want to do this slightly differently, what you could do is you could um, use Hadoop as an intermediary um, to, to enable uh, processing of weblog files. So if you were to use Hadoop, what you would do is Hadoop would be uh, sitting in the middle, right? So you would ingest data uh, from to Hadoop, and then from Hadoop, you would move that uh, out to Netiza. And Hadoop has two components. There is HDFS, which is the uh, distributed file storage, right? And then there is the MapReduce piece, which is the programming framework. So what you would do is, using Hadoop, you would just simply copy data over into HDFS, so that's actually quite quick. And then you would use MapReduce to then parse that, sessionize that, do any type of processing, and then load the data directly into Netiza tables. Now there are a few different ways by which you can do that. Now let's say you are using uh, the Cloudera distribution, then you could use Scoop uh, and, and, and actually push the data um, into Netiza, and we have a specific Scoop um, Netiza driver that helps you do that. Uh, and it's bi-directional, so you can actually push and pull data. Uh, if you're using the IBM Big Insights distribution, uh, then we have a, a framework called Jackal that allows you to uh, both, again, push data uh, into Netiza from the Hadoop side. Now, this is interesting, but again, uh, what I like a lot is, is that another capability that we offer, which is a pool model. 
right? So if you are in Netiza and, and you have a SQL query that's coming into Netiza and you want to be able to read data out of Hadoop, then uh, you can actually write an analytical executable in Netiza. And in Netiza, you could write AEs in, in Java, C++, Python, or language of your choice. And then you could use that analytic executable uh, and embed that possibly in SQL to go and fetch data out of Hadoop into Netiza. So an interesting use case could be, let's say uh, you have a significant percentage of your data sitting in Hadoop uh, and maybe a slightly small amount of data sitting in Netiza. You're using this in a hot cold type environment and you have a query which needs to join maybe some data that is sitting in Netiza and maybe a small percentage of data that's sitting in Hadoop. You could have a single query come into Netiza, use this type of a technique, pull those two data together, join it and then send the results back to the user. So that way it's a little bit more transparent and seamless in terms of how these two systems uh, interoperate.